Not quite. Uh, end of September, more than 50 foreign ministers came together in New York to celebrate uh, and inaugurate the Alliance uh, for Multilateralism. This shows the more great powers throw their weight around, uh, the more smaller and medium-sized powers rely on multilateralism. But they can no longer rely on traditional multilateral certainties. A big power like the US is no longer underwriting the multilateral order. And a country like Germany can no longer rely on key international institutions like the EU, like NATO, like the World Trade Organization to be around in 10 years time. That's really new. And uh, the hopes that many had that China would just quietly socialize into the existing international order, they've also evaporated. And smaller countries are also uh, demanding a greater say in the making of uh, international rules. That's the new environment uh, that advocates uh, of multilateralism need to work with. Sometimes it is unilateralism. Uh, when it comes to sanctions, the US often relies on unilateral sanctions that have an effect on others, like in the case of Iran and the European Union, but more often uh, big powers uh, like to rely on bilateralism. And uh, if you look at China, for example, the Belt and Road Initiative is in essence uh, a sequence of bilateral deals uh, that sometimes you have a big uh, get together in Beijing every year, but in essence it's a bilateral arrangement. And uh, bilateral arrangements are positive for great powers because they think they can just use their might more effectively rather than be b being bound by multilateral ar arrangements. Many Western policymakers think that we have to defend some global liberal international order, but that global liberal international order is nothing more than a pipe dream uh, that came up after the end of the Cold War when we could believe that uh, we would globalize the Western uh, international order. But now it's clear others are not buying this. Uh, so we should bury this pipe dream and we should instead think of an overlapping sets of uh, international orders. Uh, you have a Western uh, liberal international order and then you have a parallel order of Chinese sponsored international organizations, for example, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank, where Western powers need to engage with. And then you have a competitive arena of the United Nations, uh, where you engage in diplomacy. And then you have multilateral bodies that deal with global commons issues, uh, for example, climate change, pandemics. And then the most difficult issues, I think, are technology and economic and trade issues, that, where there is no God-given uh, functional interdependence, uh, we choose to be interdependent on technology or on trade. And there the question is, can we actually have common fora with uh, authoritarian state capitalist systems such as China or the Kremlin uh, that uh, work on technology and if so, and trade, if so, how can we best structure them? Hardly ever is interdependence perfectly symmetric. Uh, there are always asymmetries and uh, if you're a smaller country that is supposedly interdependent with a large player like the US or China, that's not necessarily uh, in, in, a, in a perfectly symmetric way. So you have your suspicions uh, on whether you're vulnerable to blackmail to coercion. So I think uh, we need to rethink uh, this automatic belief in interdependence and cooperation and need to be very smart in terms of uh, having interdependent uh, technology or uh, trade links and uh, other areas where we decide uh, that that may not be such a good idea because if we distrust each other on some levels of interdependence, that may actually undermine our potential for cooperating on true global commons issues, such as climate change or pandemics. Yes, if done right, uh, this alliance for multilateralism can help stop uh, 
the decline of uh, multilateralism. What does it mean to get it right? We shouldn't think of an alliance with a permanent secretariat uh, and formal meetings, but we should think of a catalyst that comes together in a flexible way. And uh, I think that approach can lead to some successes. Uh, this flexibility presupposes that uh, countries on the one hand they need to stick to their principles if these principles are under attack. For example, if China takes uh, Western citizens, in this case Canadians, as hostages, the alliance uh, of multilateralism, I think, should stand firm and pursue this first goal of uh, defending key principles. Uh, then the alliance also on key countries in the alliance, they need to be open to reform. The European Union uh, missed a big opportunity earlier this year when it insisted on having yet another European as the head of uh, the International Monetary Fund. And at the same time, I think we all, all members of that alliance need to take care of the home front uh, because oftentimes it's at home that multilateralism is under assault. Uh, so it's important uh, to convince the public uh, that sovereignist illusions like the ones peddled uh, by, by President Trump uh, and other ultra-nationalists, uh, they're not uh, a viable way to defend your interests in, in today's uh, global order, but that fight needs to be won on the home front. Would be nice, no? Uh, but I don't think uh, that's a realistic prospect. Yes, for sure, if uh, President Trump is voted out of office uh, next year, then we should, as Europeans uh, and defenders of multilateralism, go to the next American administration and make concrete proposals on how we can advance multilateralism and the respective national interests uh, together. Just because Trump is voted out of office doesn't mean those who believe in nationalism and sovereignism that they all voted out of office. So countries like Germany, Europeans, they need to prepare for a much more competitive uh, multilateral environment and they need to invest in having everything in place to build new alliances, uh, to negotiate smartly, and they need to be prepared to kind of put in a lot more of their own resources in order to defend free and fair trade, uh, revise uh, existing multilateral arrangements, and stand up for human rights and pursue peace and security in, in multilateral bodies. Uh, the good old times, I don't think they'll come back.